All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our presenter, Mr. Ivan Gonzalez. Come on down. Uh, round of applause for Ivan. Now, uh, quick thing to highlight with Ivan. So as you guys know, we've had our leads groups for the past uh, five to six years. But when we first started our first leads group, which is our Sage group, uh, Ivan was one of our founding members uh, for the group, along with Norm here as well. And so I wanted to highlight that because I, I think his presentation will has, has something to do with, with networking. So I, 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 I just wanted to throw that in just for those that were not aware. So Ivan, the floor is yours. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. First of all, we're just going to have a little bit of fun. Can somebody bring the slate? Okay, ready, roll camera. And mark it. Make networking work for you, take one. Yeah. Yeah. Action. All right, I just wanted to have a little fun. Thank you everybody for coming. I uh, really appreciate you being here. I love it. Uh, pretty much all the tables are full, so this is exciting. I don't even know what I'm gonna talk about. So this is great. I know some of you have uh, been to my presentations and usually I have a video to play. Uh, full disclosure, there will be no videos today. This is not about my business. This is about how we can make things work for everybody, how, how we can make it work for you. So I'm gonna talk and hopefully everybody will get something out of it. Of course, we're gonna be, um, I might call you up to give a couple of questions or comments or whatever. So be ready for that. Um, okay, so first of all, I'll walk you through, for, not everybody knows me, so I'll, about five minutes about my, my story. So imagine 1999, fresh out of film school, just ready to take on the world. And I started working on film sets, TV shows, commercials, all that stuff uh, make, made my way up from the bottom. Worked as a production assistant and kind of worked my way up. And so I've been in mostly with commercials. I did a lot of films and TV shows early on. And then I realized that commercials were more, they paid better. And so um, did a lot more commercials. And as I was working, making my way up the ladder, I always realized that I wanted to have my own company because working for the man is great, but not everybody has a great boss. <laughs> so why not be my own boss? And so while I was working, um, a couple of friends and, and myself, um, we founded Raven Studios, which was a little side project, but we treated it as a real company, except we, were still, we still had our day jobs because our projects were maybe $500 here, $500 there, and as a three-way partnership, I was only seeing a third of that profit. The problem is I was also doing about 90% of the work. So that didn't quite work out. <laughs> so I kept working and eventually made my way up to producer for million dollar commercials. I was working for agencies and my last job uh, was at a company named Beachbody in Santa Monica. Are you familiar with P90X, Insanity, yeah. Turbifier? <laughs> there you go. Um, so I worked at Beachbody for a couple of years as a producer for a lot of their advertising content. And um, it was nice, but I still wasn't really fulfilled because I was still working for the man. <laughs> and when you work in a big company like that, you're definitely working for the man. Um, one thing that happened was in the next uh, couple of years, Beachbody had realized that they spent too much money for the money that was coming in. So layoffs were gonna happen soon. Uh, I was finishing up a show uh, in that week. When you're finishing the show, you know you're working late. The problem is months before I had bought tickets to see my two favorite hockey teams. They were the LA Kings and the Pittsburgh Penguins. They only play once a year in LA. So I was really excited to see them. The problem is the game fell right on the week of, you know, delivering this show. So I'm like, man, I'm not even sure if I'm going to make it. So come Monday, I'm in the office 
and the HR guy comes to me, he goes, hey, can I see you in my office? I think some of you know what that means. <laughs> so basically, I was laid off from Beachbody, and uh, they laid off about a third of the production department. So I wasn't the only one. I come home at, by the time I get home, it was like one in the afternoon, and my wife is there going, why are you home so early? What's wrong? Normally, you're home at 8 o'clock. What, what's going on? And I said, I have good news, bad news, and good news. <laughs> She's like, okay, what is it? I'm like, okay, the good news is I'm going to go watch the hockey game on Wednesday. <laughs> She's like, okay, so what's the bad news? Bad news is I just got laid off from Beachbody. Okay, then what is the other good news? The other good news is now I'm free to do whatever I want and I'm going to go all in on making my own company. My own production company. I'm all in and so I think that this is the beginning. We're going to look back at this moment and be really happy about it. And she said, well, you accomplished everything you, wanted, you ever set your mind to, so I support you. I'm like, okay, let's do it. That was nine years ago. So I registered as a corporation, GB Pictures which actually had been a name that I had since way before. Since film school, I had registered that as a DBA. Um, does anybody know what GB Pictures stands for? Terrence, you want to tell them? It's Gonzalez Brothers. That's right, it's Gonzalez Brothers. By the way, Terrence is with me. I've known Terrence for 20 something years, I don't even know how many, and uh, he is one of our producers that I do one, and thank you for coming. I'll introduce the rest of the team in a bit. <laughs> we went to film school together. Yes, and we went to film school together. And so he knows my brother. So I had registered Gonzalez Brothers GB Pictures for a while, and I said, okay, I'm going to use that as the name of a corporation. The problem is, when you get out there to the business world, they go, GB Pictures, are you a photographer? And I say, well, not really, it's moving pictures. So when you're in film school, you see a name like GB Pictures and you realize, oh, yeah, it's like a film studio name. Yeah, that's perfect, right? GB Pictures, Columbia Pictures, whatever, Universal. Um, but then as I was in the business world, I realized it wasn't probably right for me if I was gonna be doing businesses for everybody else uh, that's not in the industry. My first project came uh, from a, a little medical group in Fountain Valley called uh, Edinger Medical Group. And uh, I had my friend Zach shoot with me. And then I took the, it was basically the two of us. And then I took the footage, took it home, and edited it in the baby room. That was my first office. It's not exactly that one, but it looked kind of like it, just a little bit messier. It wasn't as clean. Although you see that iMac there, that iMac is too new for what I had. My iMac was about this thick. <laughs> so, but yeah, I edited my videos at home, and that was uh, GB Pictures. Eventually, I decided to rebrand, and that is where IG1 came from. So basically, there's no more brother, because my brother, after film school, he went back to school, studied political science, and he has a whole career out of that. He's doing great. But I'm, j I'm the only brother doing the film stuff. So, IG1 and it was easier to explain to people what I do by changing the name. Um, so then I decided, okay, let's do some advertising. Because uh, that's the way that it works for all my, uh, you know, when I was working in the big leagues, it's like all the clients, that's all that I knew was advertising. So I'm gonna use this for advertising. I'm gonna make some ads for Facebook and YouTube and whatever and spend some money. So, how much money did I spend in advertising? In about a year, and about, yeah, eight months to a year, I spent about $5,000. Any hands to anybody who thinks that I made 15,000 in return? No? Nope. I'm gonna go down, how about 10,000? Nope. Okay, I made my money back, 5,000? 15? Okay. How about zero? <laughs> yep. So the advertising 
that didn't quite work out for the stage of the business where I was at. I think the reason is I, did, I couldn't spend enough. I couldn't afford to spend enough to really advertise. And then you gotta think about all the other things that come with that. So then I discovered networking. A friend of mine, actually my friend Zach that, I was, that you saw in the other picture, he said, hey, why don't you join this thing? Like I, I look up on these uh, websites called uh, meetup.com and they have little events that people, like businesses get together and they talk to each other, get to know each other and maybe they buy stuff from each other. I'm like, wow, that sounds interesting. How much does it cost? Free. Whoa. Okay, sign me up. So I found a little, uh, I was living in Seal Beach at the time. So I found a little networking group that met at Panera um, on South Street in Cerritos. And it was a really nice group of people. And that was my very first networking group that I ever visited. I didn't become a member, I just kind of visited once. Then I was kind of looking on Meetup for things and then I found um, a mixer for a team networking uh, chapter. And so I really liked the people there. I was like, okay, let's give it a try. So I signed up. So that was my first networking group. And it was a team networking group that met Tuesday mornings, Mimi's Cafe in Cerritos. All right. So we were there for a while. Then team networking, there was something about it that people weren't really happy with the way management was running things. So we disbanded from team and then we called it CARE Networking. Laura, do you remember what CARE stands for? No. <laughs> Caring, active-minded, referral something, and blah, 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 entrepreneurs. I don't know. But I think that R stands for like four words together, and then it's entrepreneurs. So it was CARE, and I was a member of that group for a couple years, and it was nice. But after a while, I just felt it wasn't for me. It just wasn't working out. Um, Guess what, where CARE met? Tuesday mornings, Mimi's Cafe in Cerritos. Yeah. And then of course, while being in Cerritos, I got involved with the Cerritos Chamber. I became a huge um, member of the Chamber and I was still visiting other chambers and um, also got involved with the Orange County Hispanic Chamber. Um, and uh, network after work, that's something that happens every month and uh, that's worked out for me. I haven't gone in a while, but every time I've gone, I've met some really great people. Uh, Santa Fe Springs Chamber, that's an, a little chamber down the street. That's, it's nice people though, they're nice. <laughs> and uh, then after I had left the Care Bears, as we like to call them, um, I got a call from somebody who said, hey, I'm starting my own group do you, would you like to do it? Um, yeah, sure. So it was called the Doyen Business Alliance. And we met Tuesday mornings, Mimi's Cafe in Cerritos. <laughs> That's right. And that is where I friend my long lost twin brother, Carlos. <laughs> Carlos and Norm also. And I were members of this group. And, uh, you know, it. Well, it was really nice people, but there, just, there was some things that just quite, or didn't quite work out. So then Carlos gives me a call and says, you know what, I'm thinking I, I wanna start my own group, get away from Doyen and do something that's our own thing, that's a little bit more positive. And so he called it Sage. So we formed the Sage Networking Group and we met Tuesday mornings, but at a different restaurant. What was it, Cafe and Stuff? While we were meeting at Cafe and Stuff for about a year, Carlos was working behind the scenes with the Santa Fe Springs Chamber because all the members there, all the people of the group were members of the Santa Fe Springs Chamber anyway. So we were able to get the paperwork done and everything and Sage became the first leads group for Santa Fe Springs Chamber. So first of all, thank you Carlos for doing all the hard work. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> and so once we got into Sage, boom, we were like 20 people all of a sudden, right? It was awesome. So um, yeah, so Sage, 
was the first leads group in Santa Fe Springs. I also am a part of the Irvine Chamber. I mean, my office and my house are in Irvine, so I guess I should be, right? I joined a BNI chapter. I was in BNI for two years, and it was great while I was there. It just wasn't quite for me for the amount of time that you got to put into it. Um, then after BNI, I joined the Latip chapter, but I was one of the founding members of the Latip chapter. So it's actually, it's feeling good, but I'm only into it for about a year now. So we'll see. At uh, two years is where I make my decision. But uh, so far I like it. And I also joined Provisors, which is another completely different uh, networking organization. There's a lot of lawyers in that group. So in my chapter, there's 40 people, out of which I would say at least 25 are lawyers. So if you ever need a lawyer referral, let me know. <laughs> so that is my networking, and that doesn't include trades associations that we're members of, like the American Advertising Federation, the American Marketing Association, and who knows what else. But let's talk about something that's a networking tree. So. Here is my very first client, how it came to be. This is me. And I knew this guy, well, I still know him, um, Frank Battisti. He has a company called FB Global. They do a lot of infomercials. Actually, we used to work together at an agency back in the day. And so he called me when I was, you know, I had nothing to do. And he's like, hey, can you help me with this infomercial? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So I was, trying to get a location for a shoot, and I ended up calling and finding the um, phone number for the marketing director at Edinger Medical Group. So we didn't shoot there. Three months later, she calls me out of the blue and says, you know, I'm glad that you called me because that kind of opened up my eyes and I've been thinking we might want to do some videos. Oh, cool. She's like, do you do anything like that? I'm like, yeah. And so Edinger Medical Group became my first client. And it's all thanks to having known Frank because otherwise I wouldn't have known uh, Lara. So that's a little bit of a branch. So around 2015, this is what my networking tree looked like. Uh, does anybody have any, anything you notice? Like what's, can you tell me about this networking tree? Any observations? At all. I'm going to call names if I don't. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, what? There's new growth coming from the bottom. Oh, yeah, I see that. Uh huh. What else? Any general observations? It's small. There's different branches coming out. Mm hmm. There are no flowers. There are no flowers. True. Or fruit. It is grounded. It's rooted. That's a great answer. <laughs> you have buds growing. There's buds growing. Exactly. It's going up. Yeah, that's great. The what? It may, it may not survive. It's very small. <laughs> this is 2015. I started the business in 2014. So, yeah. Yeah, it's unprotected. There's anything can happen to it. Oh, it has. Yes, it has all the elements it needs to grow strong. Yes. But just like any one-year-old business, you never know. It could get trampled over very easily. All right, so that was my networking tree. So here is, you may be wondering why we have a pen and a piece of paper in front of you. As I keep talking your ear off today, I would love for you to draw your own networking tree, your own version of your networking tree. Don't worry, there's no wrong answer, but just kind of put yourself down at the bottom. This is you, and then you, you have your, you know, it goes up, and now you have branches coming out from people that you know. And I'll give you more examples later on, so that'll, that might help you too. Don't. Do it all to, uh, at once, take your time. Okay, so people have asked me that, um, you know, they say, oh, I wanna join like five chambers of commerce and I wanna join every other networking group there is. Then 
I ask them, do you know how much time per week it takes to join a networking group? It takes a lot more time than just an hour a week. So it, to put this into context, let's say it's a one hour weekly meeting in person. First, you gotta drive there. Well, you gotta get ready, then you gotta drive there. You gotta show up early because you wanna be talking to the people that are there. You wanna doing what they say, do your networking, which is basically do your schmoozing, talk to the people in the room when you get there, and then you wanna be one of the last people to leave as well because you wanna continue doing your networking after the, uh, after the meeting. So now that one hour turned into more like two hours, I would say. Then you gotta drive back. And then you gotta follow up with people. You gotta set meetings to get to know the people that you just met. Because a five minute conversation isn't gonna tell you much. So now you gotta really take your time and get to know other people. So on average, I would say, what do you think? It's like five hours a week? One networking group on average could be five hours of your time in a week. So how many networking groups do you wanna join? Well, that depends on how much time you have. Because <laughs> you also gotta get your job done, right? So there's a few things you can do for, um, to be successful in networking that I've come to see. Number one, visibility is key. So a lot of times, like I said, if you wanna be, you can, get, you can be the first one there and the last one to leave, then people will see you. You will get to know more people. One of the um, one example is I was at, I went to a creative networking event, and I was literally the first one there. The next one to come, I didn't know who it was. We just started chatting, and and uh, we had a great conversation. And then I followed up, and it turns out he was the creative director at an agency in Orange County that does a lot of big projects. We got some work down the road because of that. If I hadn't been the first one there and been open to talking to the other first, the second person that arrived, that may have never, I mean, we may have never gotten work from those guys. So you just never know. It's always good to be the first one there and the last one to go. Um, also, you wanna be visible. So in the Cerritos Chamber, I got a lot of advertising money there, uh, a lot of bang for my advertising dollars. So any events you went to, you would see our logo there. Stated the Taste of the Region event, which is their business expo, our logo was very prominent. Um, the State of the City address, we were always a sponsor, things like that. And that actually paid off. There was, I remember one time there was a State of the City address and I had these little notebooks with our logos on them. And then uh, two weeks later, I had a call from the director of marketing of the Cerritos Mall. He wanted to do a video. So I go to his office and guess what's on top of his desk? The little notebook with my logo on it because he got it in the goodie bag. So I don't know if, I'm, I don't think that the notebook actually did the selling for me but at least they're reminding him of us. So you wanna be visible, you wanna be involved with any kind of networking group, chamber event. That's why you see us at the golf tournament now. We get some good uh, bang for our advertising dollars there. I could be playing golf, but then I'm only gonna be talking to four people. Or I could sponsor a golf hole, or a tee, and now I get to talk to everybody that comes by the golf course. So, and it's actually very reasonably priced, so happy about that. You gotta focus. Make sure that you know what you do, who is your best client, and just have that always in mind. For example, I went to visit a BNI group before I was a member, and I said, I gave my spiel. My name is Ivan, and I work with small business owners who are really excited that they have a new product or service and they want the world to know about it. But then they're frustrated because they can't explain what their product or service does in 60 seconds or less. We help them by creating animated videos to explain to, uh, to the people what they do. 
the very next day, I got a call from somebody from that group, and he said, hey, I, you know you're, you gave your presentation. That is exactly what I am. I am a business owner. I have a new product, and I want everybody to know about it, but I don't know how to explain what it does. So I heard you do animated videos. Can you help me? For sure. So even though I wasn't a BNI member, we still were able to do some business together. Um, always try to focus on who your target demographic is going to be, which is why it's good to go to events that maybe are a different industry than yours. So like, yes, we're part of the you know, American Advertising Federation. Well, we don't go to too many events for that. Instead, I'd rather go to, I don't know, the Car Dealers Association or something else where my clients could be. Technology or retail. Um, remember this, everybody thinks this. I thought this when I started. I thought that I was unique. I thought my business was unique. Well, guess what? Nobody's unique. <laughs> no business is unique. I understand like the real estate uh, um, people in the room, they know that from the moment they start. I thought I w that my business was unique, but it's not. <laughs> There's a mo um, so many video companies, whether they're large or small, they all do what we do. We just do it better, of course, right? <laughs> but you know who is unique? You are. And you are your brand. So always keep that in mind when you're doing networking. You are your brand. They're going to do business with you, not with your company. Wherever you go, that's where it works. Here's an example. Darwin. I've known Darwin since CARE or TEAM? Was it TEAM? I think it's the end of TEAM, yeah. TEAM, yeah, wow. So we've known each other since then. And I've always known Darwin's a great guy. He worked for Insperity, and now he works with CoAdvantage. I always knew I wanted to do something with Darwin because either way I knew that he had a good uh, business that he was representing. And so then um, when I finally became large enough to use a PEO and for it to make financial sense, right away I reached out to Darwin and I'm like, Darwin, I think I might be able to use you, let's talk. And it worked out actually, I gotta say, it saved me tons of money. <laughs> um, so yeah, but. I really was doing business with Darwin. It's not like I waited for the next Insperity person to come in the door and go, oh, I'll go with Insperity. I, you know, thanks to Insperity, I went to see some hockey games and be in the box and get, go to some great events. But it was Darwin who I was doing business with. So when Darwin moved to CoAdvantage, I was like, tell me about CoAdvantage. Is it better than Insperity? Is it better than what I have right now? And it was definitely better than what I had at the moment. So I'm glad I made the decision, but also there's the example. You want to do business with the person that you know. What do we say at Sage? We do, people do business with? People we know, like, and trust. People we know, like, and trust. Exactly. It's because you are the brand. Okay, so some of you are probably familiar with this. Always be closing. Always be closing. Okay, so that's not for networking. <laughs> that is completely the opposite from networking. You don't want to be that one guy in the room who's trying to make a quick sale. Nobody's going to buy from you. Instead, you want to... It's not asking what your colleague can do for you. It's ask what you can do for your colleague. If you are looking out for the other people, eventually that's going to work itself out, and then you're going to get that, you know, in return. Um, BNI has a saying. Uh, what is it, Alicia? Givers something? Givers gain. That's right, givers gain. And it's the more you give, the more you're going to get in return. Not from the same people. It probably works around the universe, and it comes back to you in different ways. But it is true. If you are a giver, you're going to get it in return. So just always keep that in mind. It's not me, 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 because that is just a very short term thing. You could be very good at sales and be all me, 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 and you can get some money. But then after six months, you'll be done with that group. So it's better to be giving and then you're going to get long term gains. Don't sell to members, sell through members. 
you have a group that's 20 people in the room and you get business from each one of them. Okay, now you got 20 clients. Guess what? That's it. But if instead those 20 people are your salespeople, now you're selling through them to the, refer to the people that they know, their clients, their family members, whatever it is, that all of a sudden something pops up in a conversation, they hear something that you might be able to help them with, boom, now you got another client and that person is still part of your networking tree that can give you more branches. Get involved. Obviously, yes, I'm here because I want you to all know me, <laughs> but also it's about getting involved. You, you want to be involved because A, it's good for the community, it's, B, it's good for everybody else, because then you know it's going to work out for you in the long run, but also with other things. It's like at, you know, when you put in sponsorship or there's events that you want to be involved, you want to help out with you know parking situation at a mixer or whatever. <laughs> so just be involved as much as you can. That's why I am in the board of the SAGE, of the leads groups. I, want, I don't make it every month, sorry, but I try to. And uh, I want to be involved because I want to make sure that the group is in a good way, moving forward in a good way, and it's also working for me. You, it's okay to think for yourself every once in a while. <laughs> and then that is why the, the tip group that I'm in, I'm also in the board there because I started at the bottom because I know what it's like to start at the bottom, you know, when the group is small and then once it grows, you're front and center. It's great. Right, Carlos? <laughs> so definitely get involved. Visit. Visit as much as you can. Visit other groups. It's okay. You don't have to join every other group, but you can definitely visit, make yourself seen, and also get to know other people. And a great thing that people may not think about is when you visit other groups, and let's say you meet somebody who you don't have that member in your, uh, one of your other groups. Let's say you're thinking about Sage, for example, right? We don't have a, tell me one, Karen, tell me one mem what type of business that we don't have in Sage. One type of business we don't Yeah, no pressure. Yeah. Plumbing. Plumbing. So let's say you go and visit a BNI group and you meet a plumber who's a great guy. You know what? I'm in a group on Tuesday mornings in Santa Fe Springs. You should come by. It might be good for you because there's 25 people in the room. You meet 25 new people that you don't know. It could be really good for your business. You're gonna get to know people. And if that person is of the right mindset of the whole networking tree, they're gonna come, they're gonna make it, and they're gonna get to know everybody. And by you bringing a guest, makes you look good because you brought a guest. It, may, it helps your, the person that you know to, um, you know, because they could meet somebody that could be good for their business. And it also helps your group because they get to know a plumber that may be a good source of referrals for somebody in the group, as well as a potential new member of the group. You never know. There's so many good things that can happen from that. So visit and bring guests. Follow up. That was one of the things that a lot of people tend to forget. You collect these business cards, and all of a sudden you have this stack of business cards from an event, and now you're like, that's great. I met a lot of people, and I handed my business card to all these people. Let's see if somebody ever needs a video. Well, it's not gonna work like that. <laughs> so you need to follow up with people. Maybe if you met 20 people at a large event, maybe don't follow up with all 20 of them, but at least follow up with the ones who you felt that you had a good connection with. And then set up one-on-ones. Invite them to other to your other networking events. One of the things that really drove me nuts in my BNI group was when somebody would say, you know, they go around for the testimonials, for like they say, you say, okay, I had two one-on-ones, uh, two CEU, what does that stand for? Education something, educational units, and then I had uh, three referrals in the amount of $3,000, whatever. Thank you for close business in the amount of $3,000. And then every once in a while you run into somebody who goes, I have nothing to report. 
moving on. You do not want to be that guy. <laughs> Even if you had no referrals, no one-on-ones, no nothing, at least say something about, uh, to give a testimonial about somebody in the group. Whatever you can say, just so that people see that you're trying. The moment you do say, I got nothing for you, everybody else who kind of mentally sh will shoot you down, like will shut off your, their brain, their part of their brain that's related to you. They'll be like, okay, never mind. But if you at least show that you're trying, so you can give a testimonial or something like that, just anything, and say, oh, I, you know, three months ago I worked with Norm and actually he, his company did an amazing job for us. Uh, at least that helps with something. Bring guests, like I said, you wanna meet people, you wanna bring guests. Here's an example of something. There's many things that can happen. One is you meet somebody at a networking event and they could be a potential client. Now you bring them to your networking group and it just so happens that in your networking group People are giving great testimonials about you, saying great things about you. Your name is being mentioned. That, this is a true story. I brought somebody to one of our groups. I, I think it was Sage. And it was a potential client. And um, she came to visit. And my name was mentioned three or four times. Somebody gave a testimonial. Somebody talked about, like, I gave referrals and this and that. And then right after the meeting, she goes to me, she's like, I want to do business with you. You seem to really, everybody loves what you do. I, I think I want to be part of that. So that was one thing. Another one is you can bring a guest and now all of a sudden somebody else from the group is able to do business with that person. And now they are going to look up to you like, hey, thank you so much. You brought this guest and now it turned into business. I'm so thankful. This is great. And then of course, you bring a guest, they sign up for the group, and now you look good to everybody because you brought an extra member of the group. So there's so many things that can happen. And of course, for your guest. Your guest comes, they meet somebody in the group, they go, and all of a sudden, by the next week, they're doing business with that person. It's a win, 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 win. All right, another example of a networking tree. It's a little bit more advanced. Now we are networking tree 101, no, 102, I guess, right? So here's me. Here's the Santa Fe Springs Chamber of Commerce. I was visiting. I was not a member at the time. This was a while ago. I used to visit the Santa Fe Springs Chamber, the Whittier Chamber, whatever was in the area, Long Beach. And so um, I, was able, I was visible. Then one day, Joe Lang, who, used, who was at the time the marketing director of El Monte RV, he calls the director of the Santa Fe Springs Chamber, his name was Colin, and he said, hey Colin, I need a new video for El Monte RV. Is there anybody within the chamber that you recommend? And Colin said, I'm sorry, Joe, I honestly don't think that I have a member that would give you the level of quality that you need. However, I know this guy that's come to visit some of our events, and I've seen his stuff, and it's good. You should definitely talk to him. So then I get a call on a random day from Joe Lang, director of marketing from El Monte RV, and says, hey, a dear friend of mine said to trust you, so I'm gonna trust you. We wanna do a video. Boom, $25,000 later, we got a video for El Monte RV. And that happened because of the chamber. And then, Fast forward a couple years, I became good friends with Joe Lang and he started his own business of digital marketing and he had a client who actually, they are also members of the chamber, right? Compliance training group. And he referred me to them to do some training videos for them. So this is a little bit longer branch on the networking tree. And now we add another branch from the chamber here, stems out over here. So I knew a guy, Hector Castillo, and we created this small business uh, series, which was a, a series of six um, talks. We would get out in front of uh, businesses, um, and uh, we did one in Downey, and one in Vernon, I forget where else. And so out of the small business series, 
I got to meet somebody who eventually got a job at Shell Roofing, and I was able to do a video for Shell Roofing. And also, during one of the small business series, I met somebody who got a job eventually at a company named Royal Kids, who are now known as Kids Empire. And we've been, you know, Kids Empire has been a great client of ours ever since. We're still doing work for them to this day. So you see how the tree kind of branches out? So just keep that in mind with your tree. Let's put yourself down, maybe put names of people or companies as, as they branch out. So 2018, now we have this tree. Any observations on this tree? A lot of branches. There's a lot more branches than there were, that's right. It looks stronger. Now, strong winds are not going to affect it as much, right? Yep. The roots are stronger. You can see they're thicker. And all the branches are kind of, you know, you see they're, some of them might be connected. You get to know a lot of people. And as you know these people, they kind of goes to the next level. So when I started, I had this notion Oh, Chamber of Commerce. That must be where a bunch of old white guys get together in a room and they just kind of like seriously talk about stuff and how to keep everybody out. It's just the name itself has this weird, doesn't it kind of like have a really serious tone to the name? Chamber of Commerce. I don't know, it just seems like it's a meant to keep everybody out. And then, of course, you got networking group. Then I'm thinking, oh, that's a bunch of 20-somethings just having happy hour and trying to pick everybody up. And you know, you probably don't even get any business. So the truth is that I was wrong on both. They're both great. They're, but there's a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. So raise your hand if you can think of something that's similar between the two. It's about meeting new people, that's right. They both can help you meet new people, start up new business relationships. Any other similarity? It's about getting ideas from others. Getting ideas from others, that's right, yes. And what is it that they want? Great. So it's about, in case you didn't hear that, it's about like-minded individuals who are all have a similar goal, which is to help to, you know, grow their companies. Where did you, did somebody, where Darwin? And it's going to be similar. I mean, the, the goal of both is to really promote business and grow business. Right? Great. Yes, exactly. So the goal of both is to promote business and grow business. Any differences? Can people tell me any differences between the two? There are some. They're not all in the same. If not, then why would we have to do both? Um, yes, Sylvia. I, I feel like the chamber, uh, a lot of times, is they help to educate the business owners about the different types of business that they can That is a great point. You get a gold star. <laughs> so in case you didn't hear, she said in the chamber, there's a lot of educating that happens. You get to learn about the new laws that are coming up or community matters, things like that. And in a networking group, it's pretty much about growing each other's business in referral, in a referral sort of a way. So yes. Sometimes the chamber is you have to be a member of. Yeah. And you know, to fill the fees and what have you. And then sometimes networking groups you just show up. Some That's of them are free. Yes. No um, expectation or no pay to just show up and like it. Mm -hmm. just come, so. That's true. Yeah. Actually, that reminds me. I, I forgot to put one of um, somebody in the list I had at the beginning. But yes, in, in chambers, it's best to be a member. And in networking groups, there are networking groups that you have to be a member, but also there are free ones out there. So
so you can at least show up and visit and see if you like it. Obviously, they'll both take visitors. That's fine. But actually, one of my first uh, networking things was the, it was called The Breakfast Club, put together by Mike Aguilar um, out in Whittier, Old Town Whittier. And it was, um, I went quite often. That was free. You had the option to buy breakfast because it was at a restaurant, but you didn't have to. But also there was no limit to anybody that could show up in the room. My personal issue with the breakfast club was about 50% of the room was Melaleuca people. They just wanted you to buy more Melaleuca stuff from them. <laughs> and then the other 30% was Mary Kay. So <laughs> I prefer when there's only one of each. <laughs> um, Another important tip to remember for networking is you are not alone. Like right now, you're definitely not alone. When you go to a new an event, see if there's somebody from your group that wants to go with you. Because what's easier? Walk into a room full of strangers and look around the room and try to figure out who is willing to talk to you and then strike a conversation. Or walk in with somebody that you already know, or two people that you already know, walk into a room, now you're already talking, but you get to meet everybody else in the room. Isn't it easier? I don't know, in my, my case, I'm an antisocial. I would say I'd rather come with people, so I don't have to have all the pressure of creating new friends. Um, but yeah, so definitely, like if, uh, if you have your leads group, make announcements like, hey, uh, there's gonna be this uh, event uh, at the, I don't know, at the Downey Chamber, and uh, it would be great to see if anybody wants to hop on over and become a, you know, check out the Santa Fe Springs Chamber to see how much better we are. <laughs> and so uh, announce it, maybe somebody will go with you. It's a lot easier than to try to break the ice by yourself. Okay, a more um, complicated networking tree. So here's me, then uh, I've gone to many events at the Orange County Hispanic Chamber, and at one of them, I met a photographer. She does headshots for business people. And so I met her, and then she reaches out, she goes, hey, I have a client that I always do their headshots, and they're looking to do video. They asked me if I did video, I said no, but I know somebody who does a great job, uh, great job with videos. And that is how I got introduced to Cario. They've been a great uh, client ever since. They do uh, software for medical billing companies. Big company, there's like 600 people at their office. And then also the same photographer had a similar situation with another company called UST, and they are a software company for Fortune 500 companies. And so we've done work with UST for years now. They're a great client of ours. And then people, they're a multinational corporation. They have 25,000 employees. They're spread out all over the world. So every week, there's somebody from a different department that ends up reaching out that they need a video. And so the great thing about a big company is people that you've dealt with, all of a sudden now they move to other companies. And now they're working at Nielsen. Does anybody know what Nielsen does? Ratings. Yes, they do the research that, you know, when you find out which shows are more popular on TV. They also do research for other things, such as like what people are buying in the stores and things like that. Uh, T-Mobile, I'm sure you guys know what they do. Elevance Health used to be called Anthem, now they're Elevance Health. And uh, Capital Group, that's also known as American Funds. These are all client of ours because people that used to work at UST are now working over here. And next thing you know, we've got some big retainers with all these companies. So the networking group just kind of really sprouted there. Another thing that happened from Orange County Hispanic Chamber, I got to, um, we did some projects for the SBA, and every year they have the SBA Small Business Awards, and one person that is highlighted every year is the Small Business Person of the Year. And we, we've done a video for them four years running. And so out of four times that we've gone to meet these uh, businesses, 
Two of them became clients afterwards. So Phoenix Fire Helmets and GCAP were the, actually the most recent ones. They both have reached out a couple months later and said, hey, I need a video. Can you guys help us? And it's, so you see how one little branch turns into so many. So of course, I would say this is what my networking tree looks like right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now let's look at some of your networking trees. Who wants to share? All right, Claudia, I knew you would want to share. Let's see, what is this? You are? Oh, nice. All right. I'm going to get up on the light here. So this is Claudia. You want to come up here so you can talk to us through it? Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I believe in this because I know that I have such a networking and my uh, biggest downfall is follow up and I recognize that so I'm really working on that. So I have a ton of leads. They're branching out and I'm just not reaching them. Um, so, you know, it's a new perspective for me and um, I am. That's what I put right here. I am what I put after it. So I hope your tree looks as good as mine. Right. I just want to add, you know, really quick. Um, what would you, if you could think about all of the things and all the networkings and everywhere that you have been, can you imagine what you would give back, have to give back if you weren't part of an, any networking events? The relationships you've built, the people that you have met, the businesses that you have helped if you didn't belong to a networking or chamber of commerce. Think about that for a minute because it's huge. We want to look at what we have and how we can measure that is by looking at what we would have to give back if we weren't part of this. All right. All right. Who else wants to share? You don't have to come up here if you don't want, but you're welcome to. You, would you like to share? Sure. Oh, nice. One. Actually, this is not my tree. This That's is Sabrina's nice. tree. Um, for, very for nice. For me, I find it very valuable to sort of source um, where my income is coming from. And, and mine's not actually a tree, it's actually a pie chart. And I went through my entire book of business to determine where the, in my case, the assets came from. And because I wanna focus on what's working, right? And so I found some areas of weakness or some areas that I wanna improve on. And then I found some areas I was surprised, gosh, that's really doing well. And so I wanna lean into that one, right? So chamber was a little thin for me. Right? But I'm relatively new and it takes a long time. So my job is to walk across the hall and lean into chamber a little bit more and build that branch. Great. And one more thing that I forgot to mention before in chambers and networking events. To get your return on investment at a networking event, I would recommend, you know, obviously I recommend give two years to everything. That's what I always do. And then you make your decision if you want to continue or not. However, to get your return on investment, I, you probably are looking six months to maybe a year in a networking event like a BNI or a LATIP or whatever um, because it's so referral driven. However, uh, chambers of commerce, two years minimum because you need to really get yourself known. Because a lot of times, yes, you're in a leads group, but then when you go to the other events, you're mostly running into salespeople for other companies. So by the time you develop that trust, those relationships so they can get to the next level and you actually get to talk to the decision makers, it takes a while. But you know what? The chambers actually, it takes longer, but you also get a lot more out of it. So it's, it's just two different things. That's why I recommend doing both. Anybody else want to share a group? Yeah, all right. So I belong to a, several, a Santa Fe Springs Chamber, Commerce Chamber, and the Whittier Chamber. I also go to a leads group in the morning called the Glab over in Whittier. You're probably familiar with that. And what's branched out for me is, and you talk about being involved, and it's really important to be involved because that's what's really kind of met Pikey's Pizza. Thank you, Pikey's. And so you were one of my customers. Thank you. I appreciate you. 
And I can point out uh, several people here that became my customers in here because of the chamber. Um, I do something very similar to what you do, and I kind of look at what my business, and 40% of my business is from referral. Whether it be the chamber, whether it be people that actually I know. 30% of my business comes from the chamber. So 70% of my total business is in this room when you think about what I'm doing today. So that's kind of a, when you talk about this tree and those branches, it's really kind of benefited me a lot. Awesome. Okay, one more person. All right. Um, hi everyone, so mine's a little bit inter interesting. Um, I started my business right out of high school. So um, my tree, I didn't really draw a tree, I just wrote some names. But at the source for me, it's actually my mom. Um, my mom was the type of woman that everywhere she went, she carried my business cards. <laughs> Always a big fan of me and um, what I was trying to do. Um, so even at her current job, when she was working, um, a person came out to fix the phone and then she goes, oh, my son fixes computers and he should go. Um, or when she went to the chiropractor, she goes, oh, do you need computer help? My son fixes computers. But um, you know, that's kind of where it started for me, and uh, my mom paved the way for me to um, meet some other business owners, and then from there, it was just about networking, referral, doing great work, um, and just caring about our clients, and this tree just brought it for us, and you know, I've been in business for 22 years now. Nice. Okay, where did I leave that thing? Oh, it's on the table. So just remember, networking is, you know, you're not born to do networking. Networking is a skill that anyone can learn and improve upon. The more you practice it, the better you're going to get. Networking is a lot of work. It's not easy, and it's not like you're just going to turn it on and it's going to happen. you got to get into it. I started my business in 2014, so that was nine years ago. I was able to keep my business afloat for five years. They say five years is the magical number. I don't know why, but that's what they say. I was still around for five years, so I knew, okay, I can still do this. I was still, five years later, I was still month to month paying the bills. I didn't know if I was gonna make next month's bills. Somehow I was able to make it happen. Not until the tree really started sprouting is when all of a sudden, I don't have to worry about paying the bills. So, in fact, I just got off of a plane yesterday because I was able to go this weekend to the Formula One Austin Grand Prix. <laughs> something that nine years ago, there's no way I would have been able to afford to do. And so it's all because did I spend any money in advertising? No, it was all networking that got me the income that I needed so that I could have a little bit of throwaway money and finally go to a Formula One race and have club seats. It's pretty nice. <laughs> yep. And remember, networking is a lot of work, but it can also be a lot of fun. So thank you, everybody. And uh, yeah, next up, we're going to walk on poles and you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, thank you.